Hello and welcome to this examination of benchmark. McAfee's benchmark, old number eight. Now, John and Eli, who I invited, he'll be joining us shortly, wanted to do this. He's been chomping at the bit to do this, and he said, we got to do it soon. I'm running out of I'm running out of it. I don't want to go buy another bottle. I can understand that. I don't have a proper bottle. And when I say proper, I mean a nice, pretty glass, 750 milliliter bottle. The shirt is too big. I need to get ta tailored clothes. If I get it large, it's too loose. If I get it medium, it's too snug. I need intermediate. That's the size we need, medium to large. Eighty proof, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Well, I got these little one hundred milliliter bottles. I bought them at Martin Wine Cellar, and uh, they were only one dollar thirty nine cents. Now it's cheaper per ounce to get the uh, glass bottle, the regular size, because it's eight ninety nine <laughs> uh, in some stores. Okay, doc. I wasn't planning to do this today, but he said, let's do it soon. I said, well, heck, let's just do it today because we got football coming on at 11 Central, noon Eastern, all these championship games. And I wanted to go into St. Bernard Parish in the parish this afternoon. So I said, why not? This is sort of a famous brand. Captain Steez says, good morning, Ron. Good morning, Captain Steez. We're looking at a iconic, I guess you could say a modern, the last 50 years, iconic brand. It did come out 49 years ago, 1968, and it was called, actually at the time, it was known as Seagram's Benchmark Bourbon. It was the Seagram's Bourbon, okay? Okay, here's John and Neely saying, okay, I'm sorry, can you try calling again? Yeah, I'm going to, um, John, I'm going to give you a link, because sometimes when you do the uh, direct call, it doesn't go through. Sometimes when you do the link, it doesn't go through. You got to do both. Not my system. Lance Delush has the same problems. A number of people have the same problems. It is not us. It is them. Okay. Um, I'm finishing up this Lining Kugel's pomegranate shandy. I've never had pomegranate before, so I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. I would assume some kind of tropical fruit. I'd be glad my hair gets longer and I can brush it back. The girl cut my hair where you're supposed to get this oil in it and push it toward the middle where it's got this peak, like I'm um, like, Latino Jose, like, hey, what's up, man? I got my hair styled to the middle, man. But I'm I'm not 15 years old. I'm not 25 years old. So she said, look, I got it to where you can do the spikes in the peak. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about the spikes. <laughs> Hello, John and Neely. Hi, Ron. How you doing? I'm all right. To this impromptu hangout, which we've been planning for months. I was talking about this lining. I was talking about my hair, how she cut it to where it's supposed to be like, you see these guys, you know, they got their oil in their hair and they got it peaked to the middle, like? The torpedo look. Yeah, it was like, um, I was thinking to myself, why did she cut it like that? I'm 49 years old. I'm like, why would I? I need, <laughs> now all I need is tattoos and some ear holes. All right. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm finishing up that Lightning Kugel's pomegranate shandy. I don't know what a pomegranate is really supposed to taste like, but Lion and Kugel's got it nailed on shandies, in my opinion. Now, you have been chomping at the bit to do the benchmark, right? That's correct. Uh, it's just such a, a, a highly regarded brand for a budget bourbon. I mean, you look, it's won all these awards. Um, it's actually won two awards in uh, 2017, the bronze medal at the New York World and uh, let's see, I wrote it down, World Wine and Spirits Competition, 
and then the silver medal at the International Wine and Spirits Competition, which is really impressive considering that it's nine or ten uh, nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine for a one liter bottle. I know it's hard to believe. Now Tyler Mansell says, "What should I drink today?" He's asking me this. <laughs> I'm playing NBA Live online all day. I can't find Ancient Age. Uh, well, why are you playing NBA online all day when there's one after the other college? conference championship game on uh, that was that would be perplexing to me I was laying in bed last night before I turned it off watching the Pac-12 championship and that was a dynamite game so why pro, why play a fantasy game that doesn't count now, that's just my philosophy play yeah. it after the games are over right why play a fantasy game that doesn't count when you could watch games that do count I don't know that's just I, don't, I, I, I have a big problem with video games. Okay, but anyway, um, back to this. Well, you know, you might have done the research on the history of this brand as well, right? Yeah, I've done a little bit of research. Um, but uh, obviously, you've probably I'm sure you've probably done a lot more than I have. You've done a lot more videos. And uh, some of the information that I got is probably from some of the videos that I watched where you were uh, looking at it against other um, whiskeys. So, yeah. First of all, if I look cold, it's because it's damp, overcast, and about 60 degrees here. And, and in Louisiana, when it's 60 degrees and this damp, it feels like it's 40 degrees. I'm telling you, it's just <laughs> not pleasant. All right. Also, one more thing. Everybody's been asking, William, William, where's William Kepley? Where's William Kepley? Well, he contacted me today. He said, I'm all right. My car is doing well. Remember, he got the lemon law put in place yeah, where yeah. he got a new car and by using facts, not opinions or assertions. And he, he kept driving that point home on our hangouts that it doesn't matter what you think. It's the facts that matter. Uh, like the whole controversy was, is Jack Daniels a bourbon? And you remember people were saying, well, I don't think it's a bourbon. And William Kepley's point was, it doesn't matter what you think. It's the legal parameters that matter. And he used that concept to get a brand new car. <laughs> All right. With no cost to himself, I might add. But he has been having health problems. We know that. And so he hasn't been able to do a lot of drinking or he's been dealing with that. And some other issues uh, he was talking about. But he's there, and he did go out and buy two bottles of Bourbon County Stout yesterday. <laughs> so uh, he must be drinking a little bit. And that's not a, exactly a low alcohol offering. <laughs> but the I new wanna... bottles of the Bourbon County Stout just became available in my area again. Um, I think I'm probably going to go pick up a couple bottles later today. I think they're available here in the 22-ounce bombers. I don't know what they're typically sold in, but... Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's not 22 ounce. It's 16.9 uh, ounce. Okay. Even less of a value than you thought. Um, I bought a bottle. Heck, I'm a sucker for a scam as well. And But William is alive and well, relatively well. Um, so I was glad to hear from him. Well, I'm glad to hear that too. I was getting a little worried. Um, he just fell off the face of the earth it seemed like and i told him i said everybody's asking about you so you were a hit on the uh video alcohol hangout so i know he'd be glad to hear that i always liked his perspective on things okay 1968 uh 49 years ago seagram's right like at that time the biggest liquor company in the world and really up until 17 years ago, the biggest liquor company in the world, but collapsed under its own weight, its massive debt load and its decade-long habit of investing in bad investments. <laughs> it collapsed in 2000 and all its assets were sold off. Well, Sazerac, you know about Sazerac. They basically built their company on going around for the last 150 years, buying up sort of like 
struggling liquor brands, okay? Kind of like Pabst does with beer, right? Right. So they go around and buy up stuff for uh, pennies on the dollar and try to bring it back. Or at least make, you know, like companies might say, Southern Comfort, we used to make $120 million a year off that stuff. Now we only make $30 million a year. And Sazerac's opinion might be, yeah, but you're still making $30 million. <laughs> we'll buy it. <laughs> so they buy it, you know, and they, they get it cheap. And they did that with Benchmark. It used to be called Seagram's Benchmark Bourbon. And it was the Seagram's Bourbon. You know, 50 years ago, bourbon is not what it is today. Bourbon used to, today, bourbon is like the cool thing to drink when you're showing off, right? Right. It's only recently gained the popularity that it has now. Um, and there's been a lot of, within the last, I would say, 15, 20 years, a lot of articles, a lot of books that have been published about the um, complexities and the manufacturing of whiskeys and bourbon. Um, that you just never would have, it just wasn't around uh, much before 20 years ago, I would say. Yeah, you know, 50 years ago, bourbon was something that 62-year-old men drank at a, at a bar that was past its prime with other guys that were 62 years old, and they would talk about things that were getting them down. It was not a cool product. Right. It's kind of like brandy. I think brandy used to be, a lot cooler maybe 50 years ago and now it's considered an old man or you know a grandpa drink <laughs> now although yeah grandmother fortunate because it is a, a, a fine product but you know maybe a grandma drink <laughs> yeah even yeah but then with with the pro proper marketing and framing they took bourbon into the big time uh, with and it's the way it's framed because it's not really different but you know it's still it's still a complicated thing because uh, someone told me last night I don't like old granddad I don't think I said it's too much of an old man product huh well you know like it's it's too much of like an old time it's old school you know old granddad is like old school bourbon it's not the hip bourbon so he kind of went along with what I was saying he was like well <laughs> Now, I'm going to read a few comments. Tyler says, Badgers versus Ohio State tonight. Yep, 8 o'clock Eastern. Man, Ron hating on me in video games. I'm not hating on you. And you could literally join this hangout immediately if you'd like. And I'm not, well, I am hating on video games, so I'll admit to that. <sighs> but for a number of reasons. Now, the Beautiful says, uh, Beautiful Beer Reviews, who I watch. He says, pulling hard for the Badgers. I would like to see Wisconsin win because I'm tired of the same five teams winning the national championship for the last 200 years. Okay. Except for BYU in 1984. <laughs> uh, so uh, Seagram's wanted to make a uh, benchmark a bourbon. Okay. You know, hey, put out a bourbon. No big deal, right? If you notice, the old bottles were different. They were more whatever you call that shape, an inverted bell or something. And it was called Seagram's Benchmark Bourbon. Kind of like a brandy bottle, you know, I'd like that little insignia area and the glass. And up yeah, right, right above the label, the little yeah. circular. Yeah. Uh, I looked at a lot of old ads and they were saying, you know, Seagram's Benchmark is a fine product, blah, blah, blah. It's, it used to be higher proof like all the other ones used to be, 86 proof, whatever. And they would kind of like make a roundabout discussion of how it was sort of a budget brand, whatever. <clears throat> fine. I'm sure a few people bought it and you never saw an advertisement for it on TV ever, you know, that kind of thing. Then, uh, Seagram's went kaput, and eventually Sazerac bought it. Well, they rebranded it. They made it as sort of a what? A Jack Daniels mimic, right? Right. The label is eerily similar. Yeah, like them and about 10 other brand, uh, bourbon brands are eerily similar to Jack Daniels. Black label, white print, writing down the either the left and right side. 
True. Yeah, the Evan Williams black label is another one. It's like, oh, somebody's cheating. Um, and then it's old number eight as opposed to old number seven. Right. <laughs> but, <clears throat> and who is McAfee? Well, he's some obscure distiller from the 1700s, just like all the rest of these companies. They go find old, obscure liquor distillers and they market it as though this guy pioneered this particular brand when in fact actually i'm sorry go ahead when in fact the guy had nothing to do with it what now i was actually some of the i was looking up some more about the mcafee's earlier it says that um mcafee's let's see was added to the name they're talking about 1992 when sazerac Right. bought the name but it was saying that the mcafee brothers surveyed a site just north of frankfurt in the late 1700s and they named it after the mcafee brothers yeah they they had helped survey kentucky All along right. that uh that uh kentucky river frankfurt area so it's a meaningless name really they just doing that because it sounds old time sounds cool yeah what? Just like Elijah Craig you were talking about is another one of those. Doesn't really have any meaning. <laughs> Just sounds good. Yeah, not to mention uh, um, what's the one we were talking about? Uh, Evan Williams. Right. Okay, but, you know, that's – I would – put that up to buy or beware. It's like, do your own research. It's like, if you're that ignorant, fine. You know, I'm sure no one really cares. They just buying it and drinking it, but don't get caught up in it too much. Cause you might get embarrassed. It's like Budweiser. Why did they pick the name Budweiser? Well, cause it sounded German. <laughs> okay. Good. That's a good idea. An old Germanic brewing town. Germanic slash Czechish Czech brewing town. All right. So McAfee's benchmark, old number eight, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. That's enough words in a name, right? Yeah, that's a mouthful for sure. But it's cheap. It's only eight dollars ninety nine cents for the regular bottle. Is it aged for a long time? Uh, no, three months. Uh, thirty six months, three years. But you know just as well as I do, our impression of it has been positive. I just poured the rest of this bottle in the glass, which didn't take much effort because it wasn't much left. I've got the one liter bottle, and I saved. I've been saving the last little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you don't have a place like Martin Wine Cellar where you can go buy these little dollar thirty nine bottles, right? No, I don't get a lot of the really small bottles. Uh, usually the, the little, um, what are they, 175 or one? Yeah, uh, yeah. The usually big handle, the handles. Yeah, well, usually the smaller bottles, I only get like the flavored stuff, like Fireball is really popular. Uh, oh, right, yeah. Kim Beam Apple, stuff like that. I don't get a lot of the, the uh, non-flavored products in the really small bottles here. Yeah, a lot of people sell the 99 and the uh, Fireball in the little bottles, the mini bottles. And, um, but I'm going to check out a place tonight pretty far away from here <laughs> they call it the parish we have 64 parishes but they call it the parish for some reason what you were saying that's uh the parishes are the same thing as counties they just don't call them counties in louisiana basically the, yeah basically the same thing okay except they started from church parishes they had, they, had, they had Catholic church parishes, and then the state government said, well, that's already there. Why not just adopt that? It'd be a lot easier, so that's what they did. Like this parish where I'm at, St. John the Baptist Parish, is because there's a church, St. John the Baptist Parish Church. 
And well, they just made it a civil parish and they put the courthouse right next to the church, you know, and then they did the same thing everywhere, you know. All right. But there's a place I'm going to go to tonight, which is a in, in, emporium. Emporium. It's got a lot of stuff. So I might come back with a bunch of stuff and violate my pledge. <laughs> you know what my pledge is. All, All right. right. No new bottles, right? That's the goal. Okay. So you would think this is trash and there's no way anyone could drink it and enjoy it. But then the, the awards, you were talking about awards, and I have a whole list right here on greatbourbons.com, one of their websites. Right. You were reading the 2017 awards. Look, and Wine Enthusiast gives it a 90 rating. Twenty in the year two thousand, it won a gold medal and trophy at International Spirits Challenge. Two thousand ten, very good, recommended Ultimate Spirits Challenge. The same year, L.A. Wine and Spirits Silver, San Francisco World Spirits Competition Gold. It won Best in Class at the International Wine and Spirits Competition. Jump ahead two years, twenty twelve, Silver Medal, San Francisco. Twenty twelve, excellent, strong recommendation, Ultimate Spirits Challenge. Gold medal, Los Angeles, bronze in 2013, Spirits of the Americas Challenge. 2013, excellent, strong recommendation, Ultimate Spirits Challenge. 2013, silver medal, San Francisco, gold, LA in 2014. Oh, I'm sorry, international. Silver in LA in 2015. Excellent, highly recommended, a great value, quote unquote, Ultimate Spirits Challenge 2015. Gold medal, San Francisco, 2015. Bronze medal, San Francisco, 2016. Yeah, that's quite a list. I don't know how they want all that being horrible. Maybe they paid people off, but I doubt it. Sazerac is uh, tight with their money. I bet you they haven't changed that website format in 15 years. But it's a good website. You know, it's all right. Does the does the trick and like most of the websites it gives you some of their brands right yeah there could be a benchmark uh, gold out there that we don't even know about <laughs> I know there's a bunch of flavored and they even have a benchmark uh, eggnog which they don't list on the website so it's like here's the 200 brands we make except for the other 300 that we're not going to list <laughs> Right. All right. Well, I hear a lot of sirens, but that's kind of like typical, right? <laughs> we must have more wrecks around here than any, any place on earth, aside from India, maybe. All right. Well, you lead the charge. <laughs> All right. Well, I just I already poured mine here. It's uh, got a, it's a little bit lighter. It's kind of a golden appearance oh, it's straight gold it's like yeah amber gold in my booklet right yeah and it does actually have some pretty good alcohol legs going down the glass for an 80 proof bourbon i'd like to get one of those whiskey tasting glasses like you have but i never seen them i actually i have never seen them either i ordered uh a set of four on amazon in the last couple weeks so I was really excited to get these. <laughs> I got this little shot glass. It's fine. Mixing glass is fine. Okay. On the nose, or I'm sorry, did you want me to go ahead and go? Yeah. Um, in the aroma, some sweetness. There's quite a burn in the nostrils uh, up front as well. I didn't pick this up before, but you know, I always say like caramel sweetness. Well, I definitely get sweetness, but it's a corny sweetness. Like a, I don't know. I definitely can smell the, the corn in the aroma. Same, same thing here telling you it's the same perception um and by the way 
when this thing wins those awards, it is done in a blind taste tests. Right. Because I hear people always saying, ah, oh, they're just giving it to it, giving the, the award to them. And I'm saying, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's very much cream corn, almost corn, yeah. sweet corn. Hey, look, if you don't like corn, don't drink bourbon because I don't think you're going to like it. <laughs> I do pick up a little bit of vanilla in the nose as well. On the back end, once you get past that corn, you kind of I, I get a little bit of vanilla sweetness, I think. But the corn sweetness is the first um, thing that I pick up on in this. And it's funny because I've never, I think as my, as I've kind of gotten more experience with different whiskeys, I've kind of developed my palate, my nose a little bit more, but yeah, I never picked it up uh, before, but I definitely, the sweetness that I get with this is primarily corn sweetness. Yeah, it's, it's very corny. Um, it's almost like I talked about in the past the candy corn that you get on Halloween, which I can't stand those things. Yeah. But it's not a bad aroma. It's not like um, blowing my socks off. But honestly, I've drank enough of these bourbons now that um, meh, it's in the mix. I think people overplay it. People overplay it like, oh, this is so great. And then I try it, and I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. Like, uh, I got to watch what I say. Blanton's, well, that's about $50 a bottle, you know, maybe $60. And my friend David, he bought it. He was all excited about it. It's got the little cage-type thing of Blanton, you know. And he said, what do you think? I said, I don't know. It tastes like a hop. I don't want to use the word hopped up. It tastes like a amped up Buffalo Trace. He looked at me like I was crazy. Then he started sipping on it. He said, it does taste like Buffalo Trace. <laughs> he said, I'm pissed off now. I said, well, <laughs> you asked. And then he, he agreed, though. And I was in that barrel house at Blanton's. What a nice smell. You smell all this bourbon just in there, and they got it. they got it cooking, you know, as they're bottling it. <laughs> I'm going to read some reviews from this year but let's talk about it first and then i'm going to read what people said okay i'm not going to look at them okay you give me the taste and everything um in the taste initially you get some sweetness some Corn yeah. and caramel type sweetness up front. I believe you said it does have a spicy note to it. Didn't you say that this actually was one of the higher rye bur um, bourbons? That's what they say on uh, – that's what Sazerac says, that it's a high rye bourbon. I do get some spiciness as well. I mean, not nearly as much as like with the old granddad, but, I mean, there's a little spicy note there. You get some vanilla. Definitely the oak, but not it's not a heavy oak presence in the taste or the finish. It's it's a light. I mean it's definitely there's definitely some charred oak there, but it's not a heavily charred oak presence in the taste. I also get like a, a fruity component like apple skins, red apples. Apples. I almost want to say like maybe cherry or plum or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely get a little bit of fruit in there as well. It is very drinkable. I mean, this is um, after drinking some of the bottled and bond stuff that I've had lately and then some of the higher proof bourbons like the Elijah Craig small batch and the um, I recently tried some of the Wood Woodford Reserve. This is a lot more easy drinking than that. And um I mean, very mellow. You really don't – you do get a little bit of the alcohol up front. Mostly – it's more in the nose, though. In the finish, there's not a big alcohol burn uh, going down the throat there at the end. 
No. But it's very pleasant, and I see. I mean, I can definitely see why why it's won so many awards over the years for sure. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I, I agree with everything you just said, and um, that high rye thing is sort of like a Sazerac company trademark. They just love amping up the rye content on their whiskeys. Why I don't know. But they like to do it. I guess there's some rationale behind it. But that could come in. There could be a factor in why that 10 high was so um, enjoyable. And even though it's a blended bourbon. I was trying to look up a little bit before we got on this examination. I didn't really see much. But the, um, the haziness that you were describing with the 10 high, I find that so strange. Couldn't get over that. I couldn't get over that. Because if a bourbon is unfiltered I'm pretty sure they have to disclose that on the label like the Blanton's you were talking about earlier that is unfiltered and it says on the bottle that it's unfiltered um, yeah but what, that, if, I mean, but, what, but what if it's what if it's just loosely filtered you know what I mean like it's not right. particularly well filtered they could still say well we filtered it True. Yeah. But I mean, I looked at the bottle. I mean, you could see all of this grit, not even grit. It looked like little pieces of cotton floating about. I don't know what it is. I can't figure it out, but it doesn't come across in the flavor as being anything strange or weird. Okay, the Kentucky gentleman, that was dull. But the, the 10 high is not dull. And I think, like you said, I can put it up against anything and it's going to at least hold its own. But it's got that, I think it's got that higher than average rye content, which kind of brings out a few things in it. Maybe the gentleman, they didn't do that because it traditionally didn't have it and they didn't want to screw around with the, the old appreciation of it over the decades. Right. But whatever, with most of the stuff I've tried from Sazerac, Buffalo Trace, Sazerac, Blanton, uh, Barton, same company. They always seem to have a little rye spice action going on. Um, this one is a dynamite deal. And I'm, if you want, I can read some of the reviews. Yeah, sure. Not too many. Okay, first, what they say about it. The nose bears caramel notes. I'm talking about from their website. I agree with that. Delicate stone fruit backdrop. You were talking about fruit like... Uh, pears, Bartlett pears or something. A robust and sturdy palate with some fine leather notes. Leather notes, dry tobacco. Let me see about that. Maybe the tobacco. I don't, maybe my palate's just not that well defined yet, but the leather thing, I don't really get that. <laughs> like what is leather supposed to impart? In, I just, I don't know. Yeah, you eat a lot of leather. Yeah. Okay. A touch of oak. And a hint of dried cherries. Oh, the finish is smooth and calming. Yeah, I feel calm right now. I feel really calm. Okay, here's my review from October. Benchmark has a somewhat lighter golden appearance, and the aroma is mild across the board. Charred wood, vanilla, almond oil, mint, dried flowers, dried and candied fruit. They are all there, but so subdued. Use Evan Williams as a bolder counterpoint. Taste is the same, all those elements, but in a mellow mood, some might say bland. Mouthfeel is light to medium and benchmark finishes with a fairly quick drop. For the price, it's a deal, but if one prefers a bolder, more pronounced experience, the Jethro T. Boots from CVS Pharmacy should work since it's at the same price point and from the same distillery. That was my review, written review. Ben there says, uh, I think this will be my new well bourbon. I get a little roasted marshmallow on the first sip and a nice combination of caramel and oak after that. At the asking price, I have not found a better bourbon. Two people voted that helpful. Bourbon Journey says, uh, I struggle with this one. I found it harsh for the proof, thin and lacking the flavor and the nose I, re I like in a regular Buffalo Trace. Aging obviously has its place. Price is good though. I'm going to experiment with some french oak barrel staves and then he updated it after two weeks with a barrel stave there's a slight fruity butterscotch and toffee like a word toffee candy nose 
The palate has similar sweet flavors and the upfront harshness has definitely dissipated. Smooth finish, much improved. And then he updated it again two weeks later. After several weeks, the sweet butterscotch flavor is mellow. Now I give it a 3.5. So he did a little, his own little concoction. I disagree, though. I don't find that it's harsh. If anything, it's one of the more mellow um, bourbons that I've had. And Yeah, and here's the last one from early, mid-2017. This is an interesting one. He updated it. His name is Cane Creek. That's it. You know, people use internet names. I have been watching for this bourbon, this bottom shelf bourbon based on the reviews, and I finally found it in a 1.75, you know, the big plastic bottle. A nearby liquor rep told me there was nothing smaller in our market. Whoa. At $16.99, I thought, oh, well, if it's horrible, I would mix it with something. <laughs> so in time, I tried an ounce, and wow, he puts it in all capitals. Wow, now I know why the great reviews. All of the flavors associated with bourbon are present in this. Caramel, butterscotch, vanilla, etc. And if you can take a sip and close your eyes, there's the faint budding flavors of everything else that bourbon can reflect. The raisin and pecan pie and dark fruit. Plus the rye is perfect. I imagine a dram of Buffalo Trace with a cube of ice allowed to melt. And I don't know if I could tell a difference from this benchmark. Now, that's some kind of review, right? Yeah. I'll be honest, this is probably my favorite budget bourbon. Uh, I mean, the Evan Williams, I think, is a little bit better, but I wouldn't necessarily consider that a budget product. I think that's more middle of the road. Yeah. Um, but, like, compared to, let's see, the Ancient Age and the um, – what's the other one I had? Um Alan Peter said, what's up? Alan Peter said, what's up, Ron? Oh, we're just tasting some bourbon. The Whiskey Scout said, my benchmark is long gone. Now, Whiskey Scout is talking about joining us for the VO on Wednesday, which I would love. I think he – well, actually, the comment I saw, maybe he will, but I saw that he posted a comment and said that he got a bottle of the VO Gold with the ribbon on it and said he would like to join that one. We could do that in January, but why not just go get a VO? You can get VO in little small bottles, you know. Oh, yeah, that's that's everywhere. He said, my benchmark is long gone, but from what I remember without reviewing my notes, brown sugar, vanilla, and some spices with some sweet cornbread in there. Bitter on the finish. Uh, I don't know what he means, S-L, bitter on the slight. Oh, slightly bitter on the finish. Yeah, well, overall... I'm really pleased with it. I'm going to go get a few bottles and show you what budget whiskeys I've liked so far. And then we'll close this out because who in the world wants to watch all this? Well, I do. I like that kind of stuff. But... Hold on just a moment. <laughs> the whiskey scout says i will get some regular vo oh great 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 um here's some other cheap ones that i liked ancient age yeah that was a good one. Ooh, and look i got some left and i might but look i know i can get the ancient age preferred Ooh. Kentucky Tavern. Well, we know, but I've talked about this enough. Ah, what Chihuahua. What you can find for ten ninety nine a bottle, a one liter bottle. You cannot imagine. Well, maybe you can imagine. Now you just got to find it. I'm looking forward to see how that one will stack up against the benchmark because they're both yeah really really good budget product. Early times. You know how long this has been on the market since 1860? That's how long people have been wanting to drink budget price whiskey for a long, long time. And it did very well, surprisingly well. Ten High, 
okay, I had been sitting on this for two years. Now, you know how anxious I was to try this after two years? <laughs> Which should have had nothing to do with this strange sediment in there. Because I had the old crow from 1977 distilled to 1969. It had no strange sediment that I noticed. But this is an interesting product. Boy, let me tell you, boy. Let me tell you. If you see it, buy it and try it. You may like it. I liked it a lot so far. It's been a winner. And it's an oddball product, to say the least. And now, last but not least, the oddest of the odd. <laughs> the uh, circus act. <laughs> yeah, beans ain't start. That'll break up a lot of families and ruin a lot of parties, but it'll be an interesting argument before the fights break out. But this is a very strange product. <laughs> One of the strangest products I've ever drank, ever drunk. Uh, I swear to you, this is a bizarre beyond belief. And I can still get the 7525 blend. It's, it's very peculiar, but you've never had it. <laughs> no, I, I have had it. Uh, oh, I wish oh. I had saved my bottle. Um, I remember it being, it was actually one of the first whiskeys I had. I think the Canadian Club was uh, the first one that I had, and then I tried the Beams H-Star after that. I was able to get a bottle, and um, I have not seen it since. I wish I had saved the bottle. but Yeah, I'm not touting it. I'm not touting it. I'm just saying um, it's, it's, uh, it's different. It's a little bit different. Um, Notice I did not display any Canadian mist. <laughs> um, <laughs> of all the ones we looked at, and we looked at a lot now, that was the most disappointing. Yeah, for sure. The Canadian mist was just bland. I mean, there are so many other budget blended whiskeys that you can get at the same price that are much better. Even if you're going to blend it, why would you buy an inferior product and pay the same price as you would, you know, as you would for something that's a little bit better and at a comparable price? I wouldn't do it. And I mean, the Canadian Club was an all-star performer. Everybody raved about Canadian Club, if you remember. Yeah, the Canadian Club. I mean, even the Seagram Seven. That I think the Canadian Club was a little bit better, but the Seagram Seven is much better than the Canadian Mist for sure. Oh my goodness, there's no doubt about that. Now, so if anybody tells you that all blended whiskeys are the same, they're wrong. <laughs> It'd be like saying all bourbon is the same. No, Tyler says I did a revisit on Canadian Club on Thanksgiving. Well, what'd you think? We're gonna we're about to shut this off. What'd you think? And that's the base model. I have had the Canadian Club Small Batch Classic 12. Uh, it's also very cheap. You can get a 750 mil bottle of that for, I believe, $18.99. And that one was really good. Mm. That's probably my favorite blended whiskey. I'm gonna have to keep my mind. I'm gonna have to keep my eye open for that. The whiskey scout said I have not had club or mist in years. Always mixed them back then. Well, I think the club, Canadian club, age five or six years, depending on what you look at. But for a while, aged a good while, is a dynamite product. The mist, eh? But I would revisit the club. Tyler said he loved it. It's cheap candy like tasting, but it doesn't make me feel sick, so I dig it. <laughs> okay. That's how, however you like to butter your bread. Hey, you know what? I think we've talked enough about this, and I'm glad we did it. Um, well, tomorrow, <laughs> I'm looking to put 10 high up against. <clears throat> well, I made all these tags for uh, future purposes. I made them. I wrote the tags out for the weeks ahead because <laughs> I tape them at the bottom of the glasses. I have 10 high versus old crow. How does that sound? 
Uh, that would be a good one. I unfortunately I've never had the old crow because it's only available here in like the half gallon size. Oh, no. I really don't want to splurge for a bottle that size. Uh, I mean, plus I like the the seven fifty mil is the perfect <laughs> bottle. You know, especially yeah, right. my liquor cabinet. I don't want to take up too much space with one product. Uh, but golly gee, I saw Old Crow at Winn Dixie the other day, and it was nine ninety nine for a seven fifty. I think it was thirteen ninety nine for the big old half gallon size here, which I mean, it's a great value. I just really don't want that big old bottle. Yeah, but it's good to drink. Believe me, if you buy it, but you don't have a channel where you're you're like putting it up against this and then that and then this and that. Yeah. But uh. It's good. I mean, it's it's a product. It's a product worth checking out. Um, but it's up to you, of course. Well, I'm sure I'll check it out eventually. I'd oh yeah, old crow. You'll find that one day, and you'll say, "Oh, look at this." And you'll get exactly the size you want. Well, anyway, my final thoughts on Benchmark is I would highly recommend it. Is it the greatest thing in the world? No, it makes no claim to be that although the awards might indicate that it's much better than you might first believe. And that's my last comment on it. I like it a little bit better than the ancient age and the early times. Um, they're all around the same price. The only difference is you can get a one liter bottle of the benchmark for the, for the same price that you can get the early times and the ancient age i don't even think they make a 750 mil bottle benchmark if they do it's not available in my area the only bottle size i get are the big half gallon sizes and the one liter oh let me assure you they make 750 milliliters i can walk i can literally walk to win dixie and get a 750. it must be dirt cheap then because it's only 8.99 or 9.99 for the one liter bottle so and well, it's about eight ninety nine for the seven fifty. But it's uh in that uh, same kind of bottle design, you know, that old Jack Daniels type bottle. The benchmark is. Yeah, and everybody kept copying this bottle. So then Jack Daniels went to those sharp edges. Remember, right? <laughs> See, mine is just a standard round. Right, the liter bottles are round. Yeah, they're round on the edges, but the seven fifties are not. They're oh. not round. No. Oh, Whiskey Scout says his was a 750. Now you see the Kentucky Tavern is a weird bottle because it's like squared off. And all the designs are the same way. Even the big plastic bottles have these weird squared off and they have a different sound when you tap the bottle. It's almost like a chime. Yeah, I saw the video you did where you were comparing the, <laughs> the glass sounds and the Kentucky Tavern won the best sounding glass. It doesn't taste the best, but it sounds the best when you tap it. <laughs> okay, well, well, that was fun. All right, so, um, yeah, I got a big bottle of wine in my cabinet. No, I haven't opened it yet because I got so much of that Carlo Rossi Merlot left to drink. And that is working out so well. That Carlo Rossi Merlot is just working out so incredibly well. But, um, oh, I was able to order a bottle of the Christian Brothers Cream Sherry. What? Oh, you did? Yeah, I should be getting it. It should be coming in next day or two. They're going to give me a call. I'm not a big wine drinker, but I've been wanting to try some Christian Brothers uh, wines just because I love their brandy. So I wanted to give it a shot. Oh, yeah, that's a really interesting product. The cream sherry and I had the dry sherry. It's weird. It does have a cork. But it, it pulls out. It's, you know, the kind where the cork's attached to the cap. Mm -hmm. Stopper, but it's wood. And you can, you can push it back in. You can take it back out. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling you're going to like it. Well, think of a lot of um, sweetness and candy-like flavors. And I'd be very interested in your feedback on that. Yeah, I'll let you know how it turns out. It's, it's because of you that I, or, you know, in your reviews that I 
was even contemplating getting a bottle, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I hope it wasn't too expensive. I hope it wasn't too expensive. I got it cheap because <laughs> they had a sale on it. It was on sale for really cheap. Now it's going back up to the regular price, but hope you didn't pay too much. I think uh, – well, I haven't paid for it yet. When, they, when it comes in, I'll end up buying it, but I think they said – I think it's around twenty dollars for a big bottle. So I hope it's big. <laughs> okay, so the question of the hour: Can you get a very interesting whiskey, bourbon whiskey, for a low price? Kentucky Tavern would answer the question as yes. Beams Eight Star, yes, and that's not even bourbon, but it probably contains twenty percent straight bourbon. Early times, yes even though it's not bourbon because it's in used barrels. Ancient age, oh yes. Benchmark, without, without question. And 10 high. So I just showed a bunch of them you can get. And we're talking about not a lot of money. for the all. If you went out and bought all these bottles, it would not cost you a whole lot. But the payoff would be much better than the payout, right? Absolutely. You can get you a nice little liquor cabinet going with some pretty good stuff and not pay very much at all, like you said. Right. So you can – I've had some people in the past tell me, I'd like to get into these adventures, but I don't have the money. Guess what? You don't need the money. <laughs> all right. You don't have to go out and pay uh, $22.99 for a 22-ounce, 24.5-ounce bottle of expensive beer that's going to last a few minutes and i'm not putting down people are going to take it the wrong way i'm not trying to rain on your parade i'm saying but if you're budget minded and everybody does not have a lot of money you can still have interesting experiences with not putting down a lot of moolah it can be done right now all right well so wednesday night we might have a big group. We may not, but it looks like some people are looking to jump on. I still, I'm still waiting on the uh, the uh, beef jerky, but uh, anyway. All right. I was excited about that. I love some beef jerky. Right. So we're waiting with bated breath on the beef jerky from Texas. All right. So y'all take care and watch us Wednesday night when we review Seagram's VO. And then a month later, God willing, we plan to do the VO Gold, which if you've never had it, you better go buy it because it ain't coming back. It's gone. Gone.